Yo, what's up everybody? You know, it's me again, Josh. I was talking with uh, Mitch and Matt. I thought it was only a month since we've been in quarantine, but this is like our seventh YouTube sermon. It's crazy. I don't know, I lose track of time. I don't know about you guys. Uh, just everything feels like the same to me. I wear comfortable clothes every day. Uh, I, I don't know, work from home. I wear slippers a lot. But I, I don't know, it's just comfortable. It's crazy that after only like a month, a little bit more, how we just acclimate to our surroundings, to everything that's going on. And we're still in Nehemiah, and it's actually kind of what we're gonna talk about today, right? They've been confessing sin, the wall's done now, things are going well, and now we're gonna talk about a little bit of discomfort that prevents a lot of people from receiving the rich blessings of the Lord or continuing in the work uh, or returning to the city that the Lord's given them. Uh, so it, it's going to be exciting. I'm really looking forward to this chapter. Uh, got a lot from it, and hopefully you guys too. Before we dive in and study, uh, let me pray for us. Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to open your word again, that you're continuing to just lead us through this book of Nehemiah. Lord, thank you for the example of his leadership and his faithfulness in the tasks set before him. God, I pray for this time as we're all quarantined and uh, we don't get to see our friends all the time and things are different, that we would still be able to open your word um, freely without fear and that you are teaching each and every one of us. I pray for the hearts and the minds of the students and the parents who may tune in and listen, and all those that are watching, God, we just pray that you are glorified in this time. So we lift it to you, in your name we pray, amen. Okay, awesome. Yeah, right, so we're going to jump into Nehemiah 11 today, so if you got your Bible or your phone, I'll give you a second to grab it, maybe if you need something to eat. I, I love cereal. I've been eating a ton of cereal uh, during this time. Right now I have Captain Crunch with berries. Uh, it's delicious. But grab your stuff, settle in, uh, grab your Bible, and we're going to go ahead and just read chapter 11. It says, Now the leaders of the people dwelt at Jerusalem. The rest of the people cast lots to bring one out of ten to dwell in Jerusalem, the holy city, and nine-tenths were to dwell in other cities. And the people blessed all the men who willingly offered themselves to dwell at Jerusalem. These are the heads of the province who dwelt in Jerusalem. But in the cities of Judah, everyone dwelt in his own possession, in their cities. Israelites, priests, Levites, Nethanim, and descendants of Solomon's servants. Also in Jerusalem dwelt some of the children of Judah and of the children of Benjamin. The children of Judah, Athiah, the son of Uzziah, the son of Zechariah, the son of Amariah, the son of Shephatiah, the son of Mahalel, of the children of Perez. Right? A lot of names, but I want to read them uh, for a specific reason this time. So bear with me in my pronunciation. And Messiah, the son of Baruch, the son of Kol Jose, the son of Haziah, the son of Adiah, the son of Jorib, the son of Zechariah, the son of Shiloni, all the sons of Perez who dwelt at Jerusalem were 468 valiant men. And these are the sons of Benjamin. Salu, the son of Meshulam, the son of Joed, the son of Padiah, the son of Kaliah, the son of Messiah, the son of Ithiel, the son of Jeshiah, and after him Gabai and Salai, 928. Joel, the son of Zikri, was their overseer, and Judah, the son of, of Senua, was second over the city. Of the priests, Jediah, the son of Jorib, and Jekin. Sariah, the son of Hilkah, the son of Meshulam, the son of Zadok, the son of Merioth, the son of Ahitub, was the leader of the house of God. The brethren who did the work of the house were 822. And Adiah, the son of Jerome, the son of Peliah, the son of Amzi, the son of Zechariah, the son of Peshur, the son of Malkidra, and his brethren, heads of the father's houses, were 242. And Amashai, the son of Azarel, the son of Azai, the son of Meshul, yeah, the son of Immer, and their brethren, mighty men of valor, were 128. Their overseer was Zabdiel, the son of one of the great men, also of the Levites. Shemaiah, the son of Hashub, the son of Azrakam, the, the son of Hashbai, the son of Bunny. <laughs> Bunny, that's 
sorry, Shabbatai and Josabad of the heads of the Levites had the oversight of the business outside of the house of God. Madani, the son of Micah, the son of Zabdi, the son of Asaph, the, the leader who began the thanksgiving with prayer, Bakbukiah, the second among his brethren, and Abda, the son of Shemua, the son of Galal, the son of Jaduthan, all the Levites in the holy city were 284. Moreover, the gatekeepers, Akub, Talmon, and the brethren who kept the gates were 172, and the rest of Israel of the priests and Levites were in all the cities of Judah, everyone in his inheritance. But the Nethanim dwelt in Ophel, and Ziha and Gisfa were over the Nethanim. Also the overseer of the Levites at Jerusalem was Uzi, the son of Benai, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Mataniah, the son of Micah, of the sons of Asaph, the singers in charge of the service of the house of God. For it was the king's command concerning them that a certain portion should be for the singers, a quota day by day. Pethiah, the son of Meshazabel, the children of Zerah, the son of Judah, was the king's deputy in all matters concerning the people. And as for the villages, with their fields, some of the children of Judah dwelt in Kerjath Arba and its villages, Debon and its villages, Jechabazil and its villages, in, Yesh in Jeshua, Molada, Beth Pelet, Hazar, Shual, and Beersheba and its villages, in Ziklag and Makona and its villages, in En Ramon, Zora, Jarmuth, Zenoa, Adullam and their villages, in Lachish and its fields, in Azekah and its villages. They dwelt from Beersheba to the valley of Hinnom. Also the children of Benjamin from Geba dwelt in Michmash, Aijah and Bethel and their villages, in Anathoth, Nob, and Aniah in Hazor, Ramah, Gideon, in Hadid, Zeboam, Nebelat, and Lod, Ono, and the valley of craftsmen. Some of the Judean divisions of Levites were in Benjamin. All right, names, villages, lots of stuff going on here. Let me kind of paint the picture, right? So all their focus, the entire purpose from Nehemiah's leadership, God's providence, his hand upon their lives was to rebuild the wall. There's names listed of people willing to go into the holy city, uh, villages where the people didn't. And there's so much here in this that I think we can learn from. So we're at a place where the wall's built, it's fully finished, and it's time to move into the holy city. The wall to protect them's up. But what happens? Does everybody go? No, not everyone goes. So let's go back to verse 1. Let's look at what happens here. It says, Now the leaders of the people dwelt at Jerusalem. The rest of the people cast lots to bring one out of ten to dwell in Jerusalem. The holy city and nine tenths were to dwell in other cities. Okay, so God had called them. Here's these people. They were in Babylonian captivity. They came back. They rebuilt the whole wall to protect the city. They knew that's what needed to happen. Nehemiah was leading, providing, helping them uh, fight and defend what was rightfully theirs. And here we go. We have this opportunity to step into the city, to live there. And people aren't willing to do it. Not all the people, but a lot of them aren't willing to do it. So they have to cast lots. They basically have to draw straws to decide who out of every 10 is going to move into the city. Now, I don't know for sure. I would hope that if I helped build and protect this city with this wall and I'd seen God's provision, that I would willfully want to go into the holy city. But things prevented them. Think about it. If all their focus was on the wall, there was probably a ton of repairs left on the city that needed to be done. Rubble in the streets, things going on. So discomfort, right? Talked about it at the beginning. Right now, we're getting into a comfortable situation because we're just used to quarantine in, in a way, right? An uncomfortable situation prevented a group of people from going into what the Lord had given to them right? Continuing to do that work. Guys, discomfort in our lives prevents us a lot of times from faithfully walking in what God has for us. Maybe he's tapped you on the shoulder. Maybe he's called you to go and pursue something else. 
and it sounds uncomfortable. Well, we should just take a step. But comfort prevents us from doing that. We can be sitting at our homes now. We've, we've been just posted up, maybe playing video games, maybe just watching tons of Netflix shows, maybe, I don't know, you've just become comfortable in this season. Schools online, all these different projects going on. Some of you who had jobs maybe don't have work right now. So it, it's crazy. It's wild. But don't let the comfort prevent you from pursuing God's call in your life, right? To faithfully see it through. It's really rad if you, we'll look at it in a few moments, but I just want you guys to be reminded of that. Ask yourself, have I just become extremely comfortable now? Am I just falling heavily back into old habits? Right, we, were, we had a staff meeting uh, this week and we asked some of the questions, but one of the questions I thought of in my own mind are what are some habits that I stopped and now I'm back on again? And I mean, you all know this, but one of the biggest is I feel like I drink more beverages than I had be before. I ate a lot of snacks and I wasn't doing that as much. I'll probably never cut it fully out of my life. But when you get comfortable, it's just easy to coast. So that's where we are. We're in a group of people who were comfortable and they didn't want to step out. I want to remind you of somebody that new discomfort, and it didn't prevent them from following through. I bet you can figure it out. That's right, Jesus. Jesus came to this earth literally to do ministry. And while he, he was here on this earth, it wasn't ever probably comfortable for him in the sense of, of couches and beds and, and food and just endless days, long days, always talking to people, always praying. Um, he would step away to, to have his time with the Lord. But always something happening. I want you guys to look at a verse here. It's Luke 9.58. It says, And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Guys, nowhere to lay his head. Could you imagine sleeping on the road, heads on rocks, heads just on the ground? It, was, it wasn't comfortable, but he faithfully did that work, right? Because he's called to do it. It's so amazing to just watch the, rich, the richness and fullness of people who are uncomfortable doing God's work because he always provides, no matter what, right? He's called you to somewhere uncomfortable. He will sustain you in that. It won't be easy, but he'll sustain you. And this group of people, they, they saw an amazing work through, rad, radical, finish this wall. Now the city's ready for them, but it's uncomfortable. And they didn't want to pursue continuing to just go into the holy city that was promised to them, that, that was their city, chosen for them. Uh, pretty wild. Now, that wasn't the case for all of them. We're going to read that in a second. Verse 2, it says, And the people blessed all the men who willingly offer themselves to dwell at Jerusalem. These are the heads of the province who dwelt in Jerusalem. But in the cities of Judah, everyone dwelt in his own possession in their cities, Israelites, priests, Levites, Nethanim, and descendants of Solomon's servants. All right, guys, willingness to seek the Lord and to serve him when opportunity presents itself, man, amazing. What a blessing this is for these guys. If you guys look at it, Verse 2 says, And the people blessed all the men who willingly offered themselves to dwell at Jerusalem. Guys, everyone saw what they were doing. right? We talk about it all the time. People watch us as believers. And our response to situations in our life, how we act, what we do, causes reactions from other people. And all these people blessed them because they were willing and wanted to just go towards this place that was given to them to step into it even though it was uncomfortable 
man, I wish in my heart that's what I desire to do. To be uncomfortable in situations if that's what the Lord has for me. But comfort's so much easier, right? Getting your sweats, getting your hoodie. Uh, maybe not now because it's hot, but just to get comfortable. That's the most simple thing to do. But let's get uncomfortable in pursuit of the Lord. I think it's so, so rad. Uh, such a, a beautiful picture for these guys to be just willing to step out. I think of a couple stories in my life where discomfort, right, was still met with such, like, beauty, um, such a response from the Lord. I had a friend in high school. I remember this, like, vividly. We often would go to the Delmar Highlands. I know a bunch of you have been there for either Boba or Pokey or, or now the new handles, whatever. Uh, but we were at the, I think it's a Ralph's up top, right? And sitting on a curb outside the grocery store was this guy. He was just looked distraught. He was just sitting there head down, um, really sad. And my friend, uh, Daniel, didn't know Spanish, right? And this guy, we found out, didn't speak English. Yet, he goes over and has this, like, cube thing, like this old evangelical tool. Maybe you've seen it. It's like pictures of Jesus, the gospel story. And not knowing Spanish, shared the gospel with this man who later accepted the Lord. Now, that can't have been easy. That can't have been comfortable. But how encouraging it was that the Lord still helped him through that situation. And it was so amazing to watch that happen, right? To see that beautiful picture. What mattered to Daniel was seeing the kingdom of God grow. And, uh, and it was so cool to watch. And then the other is with you guys, right? Unfortunately, this year we had to cancel our Mexico missions trip. But a couple years ago, I got to go down on this Mexico missions trip. And you guys gave up your spring breaks and you went down. And it's so fun and so rewarding, but it's not easy right? There's a day we went into the slums, and we go uh, to this church in there where Hector's a pastor. Hector's awesome. But we kind of play games with all of the kids that grow up in the poorest of the poor places, the slums. Uh, it's crazy, the st statistics of these kids there. And all we do is we come in, and we just help do projects, and then we run games for these kids. And watching you, the students, whoever you were, just grab the hands of these kids or hold them or just try and share the love of the Lord with them is, was so rewarding, was so beautiful. And, and just to see, even though it can be uncomfortable, that the Lord is so faithful in that, that it's worth stepping into. These, these people had to just step into the city that was given to them, but, it, but they didn't. Not, not all of them. And you notice that I read all the names and I said it was for a purpose, right? If you notice, I'm not going to read them all again, but from about uh, verse 4 to 24 is a list of names. These were the people who willfully went into the city to live. And they are jotted down in this book. We know their names. So cool. All the people won't bless them poured into their lives. And the Lord blesses us when we step out in faith and, we, and it sustains us in that. But then if you guys look from verse 25 to 36, it's not names we see, but cities. These are the cities outside where the people weren't willing to step in to where they're being asked to go, what was promised to them. Guys, I, I don't know about you, but I want to be like the names written down. Willfully following the command of the Lord. Willfully going where he's called me. Willfully just pursuing and entering a city with joy in my heart. Even in a, an uncomfortable situation. Even in a challenging place to be. I want to go there. I don't want to be like the people who just continue to live their normal lives because it was comfortable. And maybe that's the challenge for you, right, this week. Maybe the challenge is, what is causing me to be comfortable? What is causing me to stop listening to where the Lord is pushing me or pointing me to go? 
right? Is it being distracted while school's going on, not paying, paying attention fully? Is it ignoring a text from somebody you don't necessarily like all that much? Maybe that's easier for you to do. So how do we go from these comfortable places to discomfort for the Lord? What's the answer? There's no right, there's no specific answer for, for all of us, but it is to do what God calls us to do, even if it costs us something, right? Jesus had nowhere to lay his head, yet he pursued the ministry he was called to do to the point of death, right? Two weeks have gone by since Easter, but his but the reminder of, of him doing that ministry at the, at the cost of that, man, that should inspire or, or push us to grow out of our comfort. In this week, guys, I want you to dive, dive into the Word, right? If you feel prompted to read, read. Even if it's two or three times a day. Find out in your lives what is that comfortable thing you need to cut out. I have to think about it too, right? I have to think about what's that comfortable thing I should do less of. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see this in your lives. I think it's an amazing thing. But the thing that we need to do, and that's going to help us the most, is to abide in the Lord. Abide in Him. Spend time with Him. Be in the Word. Be in prayer. Take extra time than you usually don't to draw nearer to God. Man, it'll be so fun to watch. Just a few, you know, it was just a few verses, but it was so impactful for me. So that's my encouragement for you. Let me close for us. Uh, yeah, Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we have the examples of Nehemiah and all the names listed and jotted down who willfully and faithfully despite discomfort, continued to follow through, Lord God. May we be a group of students and leaders and, and staff at this church and people who do what you're calling us to do, even if it costs us the comfort that we love so much. Uh, we do continue to pray for those uh, who've lost loved ones due to COVID-19 who have other health ailments, cancers, and, and other things, Lord God. We just pray that your hand is upon those families, your hand is upon the students, those who are struggling right now, God. We pray that they would just dive into you, lean into you, grab a hold of you tighter. May you just pour your riches um, of knowledge, Lord God. May your hand be upon their lives, on our lives, and we just lift that to you. Uh, we love you, Lord. We thank you. We praise you. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, guys, I don't want you to lose sight of the awesome things, the blessings that the Lord has been pouring on your life. Maybe you need to take some time this week, uh, jot down a few of the things that you feel lucky or blessed to have in your life right now that maybe some other people don't, uh, and then bring some perspective into it right? But abide in the Lord this week. Join us for our Tuesday night, if you're in high school, Zoom call, or Wednesday night uh, for our midweeks. If you can't make Tuesday night in your high school, you're a junior high, join us then. Uh, really excited. Um, I hope you guys have an amazing week, and yeah, stay up on it. Peace.